Hey everyone, hopefully you're doing well. This is the Christmas special. We've got all three of us here today. Hey, yep. Look at that, all three of us. Yeah, three amigos, huh? <laughs> all three of us. Hopefully the audio goes well because we've only got two mics. So it's it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be a bit difficult. Um, what we want to share in this Christmas special is not really focus on Christmas. It's more about um, you know how how we've been in this last year, um, just our journey with the Lord and stuff like that. So yeah, we're just gonna share our experiences and how the podcast. Yeah. Uh, how how did it really? Um, affect our lives even though we got like 10 views a, an episode so we're doing all right we're doing all right double digits we're getting there um yeah so a- any any thoughts any anything that you guys want to share hmm well no to be honest for me i'm just gonna go like that um we can throw some baby jesus in the conversation as well <laughs> from christmas but for me i think it's been a um it's been an encouraging um, kind of journey with the podcast because it's not just for others as well it's for us we're ironing out a lot of our views as well mm. we're sharpening each other if we don't agree with something that the other person says we can yeah. kind of just you know knock around with them and yeah yeah um but yeah i think i think it's been really good for us for our personal developments our personal view of scripture um and you know just ironing out where we want to go as a podcast, as a team as well. I think, yeah. And so we can look more next year as well about how we're going to improve and how we're going to progress. um, Yeah, definitely. I I mean, well, we, a lot of people were asking us to go through this route where speak about controversial things, um, you know, say some controversial comments, Mm. you know, because it gets... Uh, clicks and views like be the Andrew Tate of Christianity kind yeah, of yeah something like that and and look um it, it just wasn't sitting right with our conviction we thought we want to serve God we want to honor God and and we want to do something that's honorable yeah. like something that's respectful we don't want to just act childish or be childish mm. or say random things just to say hey that could get you some views yeah. you yeah. know act like act foolish to gain the attention of the fools. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's <laughs> pretty much the way yeah. it works. We, we don't want to do that. Um, we were talking about it in the, um, in the mental health episode, mm. we we're talking about seeking the kingdom of God and everything else will be added. If this podcast is something that is going towards the glory of God, it's some, if it's something that God is honoring, he will support it. He will sustain it. He will make it or he will break it. So we're just going to seek the kingdom, seek to glorify him through the podcast and then see where, where it goes and where it lands. Yeah. And I've always had trouble setting up the podcast. Like I'm just trying to find a proper way of setting it up, but Mm -hmm. hopefully through the Christmas period, I don't know. I have to find something. Got to watch some videos on how to set up a podcast. Yeah, because every time people say like, oh, you know, the the arm is a bit coming into your face or mm-hmm. the light is too bright yeah, or the audio is not good. But You know what, guys, just be gracious with us. Yeah, starting. Um, we're start. amateurs. Yeah, amateurs. Gonna, yeah. yeah. What do you think, Emil? Well, How do you think it's gone? I, I think, I think um, yeah, we, we had to make a decision whether it was to compromise our, like, our mission which is to spread the gospel and to you know just glorify jesus christ or to make something entertaining and and like we kind of thought about it and it's like well it can be it can be both entertaining and not compromise um you know the gospel and the scripture so why not have topics that are interesting and are relevant but at the same time always make it about jesus christ and and center around him first so i I think we found a good balance of course it's nothing is perfect we're always gonna try to you know iron it out like there's few things we need to work on um but if you guys ever have any any comments any suggestions any constructive criticism or just criticism in general please we are open to it that's how we grow uh we learn from mistakes and 
If you see any, please let us know. We do care about feedback. It is important. And um, yeah, we'll love you either way. <laughs> Even if the suggestions like, you know, get rid of the Arab guy in the middle, you know. <laughs> Or, or shave or, the beards off. Shave the beards. No, we're not doing that. Sorry, man. We, got, we all got we all got double chins. It's not they're not they're not leaving. Yeah. You have a double it's chin. I got like a triple and a quadruple. Just, just in your us. Now. The beads are for your sake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, that, that's actually true. It's it's something that if you, if you have any opinion on on the podcast or if you like I said any new segments because mm-hmm. I know some people like to enjoy some. Uh, reaction videos or mm, sure. you know talk about certain other topics that you might be interested in well we're, we're trying to build a base right yeah. mm-hmm. um, a base with with our viewers and saying it we're so happy to put the material that God's putting in our hearts but we're also happy to put more emphasis and more effort into what's next like mm-hmm. if, if you feel like you want something else um, I'm not and like a computer savvy or tech savvy guy, but then I'm just learning as I go, mm-hmm. like with the, yeah, with the we'll... editing and stuff yep. like that. So yeah, we'll take a step at a time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's it's going to happen. And um, to be honest with you, I think if we've done it for the views, we would have looked at the last few months and be like, it's not working, yeah. move on. But then we're the type of people that are like, we're just faithful with what God gives mm. us, whether it's one person, yeah. um, doing like we're serving one person or, or a thousand, we don't care. Um, that's something I've even experienced in the mission field uh, when I was in Taiwan. Um, I went to some places, man. Um, it was like five or six people in that church, and it was like a faraway village, somewhere that even like the cities surrounding the main cities won't even go to yep. that's how far it is and they would often ask oh why would he come here like we're only six people i'm like man it doesn't matter how many people you are yeah if i get an opportunity to share the gospel with you or teach the word with you then i'll take that yeah and i've been to places and and i often share this as well like big conferences big conferences even even in taiwan like you have hundreds of people, thousands of people. And then I was like, I don't feel the spirit of God moving as much as it was with those six people. Those people came in right. humility and simplicity. No one was focusing on the lights or on the programs mm-hmm. or who was there and what personality or mm-hmm. preachers were there. People just focus on God. And, and it was so amazing. It, it reminds me of, of Jesus' ministry. Well, that's what I was just going to say. Like, it's it's such a resembling factor of the birth of Jesus. I was talking, we're doing like um, our Christmas devotions with the kids. Who were the first group of people that the angels came to? To yes. shepherds, right? These simple, humble guys mm-hmm. who reflect a characteristic of Jesus as shepherds. But in their simplicity and humility, they're the first people that the angels announced to. Mm-hmm. The good mm-hmm. news. Right, yeah. like that's an amazing aspect of the ministry of the gospel. It's like we're going to the highways and the byways to the most simple people, to the people who the kings and the the elite of the world would never even give credence to. Yeah. But Christ does. Christ values them, and that's one of the things. Like, there's going to be a lot of people, or even a few people, who are watching who are very obscure in the world. They're unknown. But you're known to Christ and you and Christ values you. And that's the reason we do this. Mm. That's the reason Christ came is because he values you, even if the world doesn't. Yeah, uh, that's that's interesting. I, I know it's a bit off topic, but it just reminded me of Jesus says, I never knew you. It, it, it's like you, you can try and be known by a certain person yeah. that mm. you really care about. And you feel like if this person recognizes me then my life would be better, mm-hmm. right? Whether you're trying to date someone, you're like, oh, if only this guy or girl can recognize me. Or you have problems with your family and you're like, if only my dad or my mom can recognize me. Mm-hmm. But then even if everybody else doesn't, you need to know that there is only one person can mm-hmm. recognize you. If you walk in his ways, if you have fellowship in his spirit, 
he recognizes you. Yeah. He's the person that when it comes to the judgment day saying, I know this guy. Yeah. I know mm -hmm. this guy. But there are people that are recognized by many. Jesus will be like, I never knew you. And they're going to sit down there and share all of their ac accomplishments. We heal people. We delivered people. But you know why they share these accomplishments? Because by those accomplishments, other people recognize them. Mm. And they thought God could fall into the same trap, right? If I could just share this with God, mm. he's going to change his mind. Yeah. No, it's not going to work that way. So God knows the heart of the person. If God knows you, that's sufficient. That's enough. Yeah. If other people know you as well, that's a blessing. Yeah. yeah. We know like John the Baptist, if you read beginning of Luke or even Jesus, when they grew up, they found favor in the eyes of God and yeah. the eyes of people. But then the eyes of the people, that favor quickly faded once they started to open their, their mouth more and more mm. and more mm. and sharing the kingdom, repentance and people turning away. So s people stopped recognizing them. Yeah. They, yeah. they didn't want to have anything to do with them. That's why they said to Jesus, oh, isn't that the son of the carpenter? Yeah. So they, they trying to devalue mm. who Jesus was saying, yes, he's a nobody. Yeah. Because he was saying radical things. Yes. I mean, that's like, I wrote a, a kind of mini article, um, on online about this, that writing articles these days. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but like talking about the fact that the gospel is polarizing, it polarizes. Yeah. So like it, it makes a division and it's not like the gospel is going to be all inclusive and it's just going to bring harmony and peace to everyone. Jesus says he comes with a sword, yeah. right? Because the gospel is for a person who is going to remove all ego, all self, someone who's going to deny themselves and follow him. Mm -hmm. And most people don't have the capacity to do that because they love themselves. Yeah. They love the things of the world. And so there is an aspect of division here where it's like, it's the humble and the meek who receive the kingdom. Those who are something in the world, it's very hard. Mm. Those who are rich, those who are elite, those who are kings, the Bible says it's so hard for them to come to a place of accepting the kingdom because they think they're something in this world. They are serving in uh, the kingdom of this world. It, you can't serve two masters. And that's the whole whole message and thesis of Jesus. It's like, either you serve my kingdom or you serve this one on earth. Mm. Make your choice. Yeah. So it's like this dividing line, a line in the sand. And those who are humble and who have nothing in the world, they're like, hey, look, I've got nothing to lose here. Yeah. If I accept Jesus, what do I have to lose? If you're a king or an elite in this world, you have a lot to lose. If you're a millionaire or a billionaire, amen, you're risking everything for Christ. This does remind me of the sword of the spirit mm. um, in um, Hebrews, Hebrews 4. 4 yeah, yeah. And it speaks about the, um, the, the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, uh, piercing even the divisions of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So Jesus being the word of God, speaking the word of God, is bringing that division between a lot of things. It's, it's that cutting thing that's separating. Mm -hmm. and Between that, flesh and spirit. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, isn't that the main intention of a sword, mm -hmm. right? The sword is there is to pierce things, divide, divide things, right? Even when you when, when a soldier would use it to kill someone, like you're literally cutting something. Or or whether it's, it's a person that's in the kitchen cutting vegetables, you're literally using it to divide, to divide. things, right? Yeah. So having the word of God, don't be surprised if you're going to see division being created. And that division happens not because God wills it. God is a God of unity. God wants to bring people together. Mm. But that division happens is when people don't want to have anything with God. Yeah. Yeah. And as God called us to be out of this world, to separate ourselves from the world, um, he's actually calling us to divide ourselves from the world, yeah. to separate ourselves. And those two things can't be together. Well, right? that, yeah, that, no. that, enemies yeah. right? that division like you say it kind of tends to happen from the opposing side because 
they see the light and they don't want that light to shine on their darkness, right? Mm -hmm. So they look at the light of Christ, they look at the light of Christ that's in you, your holiness and your righteousness as a result of coming to Christ is shining light on their own darkness. Amen. You know, I'm just trying to encourage my brother here. You know, he's gone through some hard times. <laughs> no, but yeah, like it's it's kind of like we say when it's polarizing, it's polarizing because they don't want to subject themselves to that kind of humility and submission to Christ. Mm. They want to do life their own way. What about people that are not Christian? I mean, sorry, people that are Christian, but we have division in let's say denominations in christianity yeah. yeah yeah what about the what about that like how how do you what do you guys think about that why do you think there is a division in so many denominations and i'm not even going to go into the divisions within the protestant denominations just in general like the big groups Prot protestants you know catholics orthodox etc why why the division right and is it from god and if so if it's if if, if it is why if it's not why and what are, what is everyone thoughts on it it's a loaded question it's a very tough question <laughs> I, well personally um it is it has been a challenge hmm. throughout my christian life uh has been a challenge um you know you, you look at both sides of the argument where people would say let's call for unity mm -hmm. and there are believers on both sides right and there are a good argument where say okay the other side is clearly um living in idolatry um or heresy and, or yeah. heresies and and they're not like you know they're not heresies that are not destructive to the soul mm -hmm. they are heresies that are destroying the soul of of man um but if you look at Protestant, historically speaking, um, they were very critical with the leadership of the Catholic Church, but they recognized the Catholic Church to be a church. Mm -hmm. okay? When we talk about Martin Luther, Martin Calvin, Luther, yeah. and so, so on. Um, I think today, because we have gone, what is it, four, five hundred years now? Is it because of the accretions of the Catholic Church, or is it because we've distanced ourselves from the Catholic Church? The Catholic Church has remained the same. The yeah, the the idea, the idea of Martin Luther was never to revolt; it was to reform. So he wanted mm -hmm. to keep the Catholic Church, but for it to reform mm -hmm. in in its hierarchy structure, in the way they do certain indulgences certain doctrines and yeah. that kind of thing so he had his 95 theses he's like this is going to make the church better yeah this is going to heal it he was still Catholic. they yeah they did not agree with that mm. they basically they um excommunicated him yeah and wanted to put him to death for it um and but this is one of the things like what you were saying there's an evolution of it because there was biblical illiteracy. People didn't have access to the word of God, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the major themes of the Protestant Revolution, or Reformation, sorry, even before that happened was we need the people to have the word of God. Yes. They're all, the only feeding they're getting is when they come to the church and the priest shares the message. That's it. That's all they get. When they go home, they don't have it with them. Yeah. Right. So the major theme was give people the word. All right. William Tyndale had that. You had John Wycliffe. They wanted to give people mm -hmm. the word of God. And then with Martin Luther, it came about. Mm -hmm. And that brought a huge dagger to the Catholic Church because people now realize, whoa, a lot of what they did is unscriptural. Mm -hmm. uh, the way yeah. that they did church was unscriptural. Do, do you see that? Well, I, I would recognize that now um, you see more emphasis on families having the Bible in their mm -hmm. houses. Mm -hmm. And despite what d denomination you're in, um, you, you would go to a Catholic house, you'll see that a Protestant, an Orthodox, you would see a Bible, a Bible. there. Yeah. So I think even though that might have been, I, I guess, a battle in history, um, it, it definitely it reaped won. fruit. Yeah. 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 So there was it a reaped. victory in that sense. There's a triumph in that sense. Yeah. That now the word of God is ready, readily available. Man, it's on our phones. I've got like a yeah. thousand versions on my, my Bible app. Like yeah. it's crazy. That's amazing. That's a beautiful thing. But what's happened is because of that, then theology had to begin to evolve again. 
mm. right? So evolve in the sense that it's fully available here. It's it's already there. That's theology, right? But we've had to rediscover a lot of concepts. Find the clarity. Find the clarity, like justification by faith alone, which is the big thing with modern sanctification by just uh, by faith, right? I mean, the idea that we're not there's not like a commingling of faith and works together to earn the favor of God with justification, and in the same way with sanctification, that the just live by faith. Right. So day by day, we are drawing and we're clinging to Christ. And then there's other aspects of, you know, the Trinity, triune nature of God and penal clarifying. Yeah. Penal substitution, the atonement. There's clarification in the <clears throat> fundamental tenets of the Christian faith that needed to be rehashed. But now what happened? Sorry. Sorry. What happened in history, especially with the Protestant denomination, is some protestant denominations were like well we actually don't like the historical idea of this doctrine mm. like the trinity yeah and they're like well maybe we just believe in something like modalism where you know god is just one person that manifests in three different things you know mm. so like the yeah. jesus only kind of group that's heresy right and that goes heresy. clearly against what the scriptures and then you teach. have some gnostic sects and you've got some that are you know Nestorian and you got you got many sects yeah. in and they don't even have to be Protestant. It's just some of them are, you know, from Orthodox Church, some are from the Catholic Church, some so you have some sects that are clearly heretical. Heretical. But here here's my point, because my point still stands. We have an essay. Why <laughs> why did the schisms so let's go back to Orthodox, Catholic, and then Catholic, Protestant, and then all right, the schisms happened in Protestant. Why in is Protestant. God allowing it? Unless it's if it's in His will, why is God allowing it f to still happen? Why why are there still divisions? And if it's not in God's will, it's not what God wants. Why is it happening then? Okay, um, if you look at, for example, Ephesians mm -hmm. um, three, I'll go there. I want to share a point here. Um, so if you look at, uh, where are we? Sorry, Ephesians 4, verse 1 to 3. Could you read it? Because it's right next to me. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another, endeavoring to keep this, the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Okay, that's great. And, and then after that, verse 7, all the way to the end, it speaks about how God put the fivefold ministry, right? Yeah. You've got uh, teachers, shepherds, evangelists, prophets, and apostles. And he speaks about their role in the church to bring maturity in the church, to bring unity, and to build that one body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, that is the ideal goal for the church. Yeah. Now, it is... I don't believe it's the will of God to divide the believers. Mm -hmm. I believe the will of God is for the believers to be united, not only spiritually to be one body, mm -hmm. but also in this in this world to be one. Now, when divisions happen, which is the the advantage that sin takes in the church, I believe that God can still use that to continue to glorify him and further advance his kingdom. Mm -hmm. One of the examples I would see is in the book of Acts. When um, when an argument happened between Barnabas and Paul, the Bible says that they separated and it was all issue because of Mark. One wanted to take him, one didn't. The, the Bible shows that through this division, God was still able to accomplish his, his, uh, his way and his calling for those two people. Barnabas went his way and God blessed him. Paul went this way and mm -hmm. God blessed him. Now, the problem that we find today is the separation, Barnabas yeah. and Paul, people want to pick a side. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like... Well, now we look back in history, we can see the blessings for both. And it wasn't permanent in the sense of like disunity. Yeah. They it, came together. They came back they together. together. Yeah. Personally, I would gladly, would love to see all denominations fall apart mm. and come back and be one. One church. 
will there be different opinions? Sure. 100%, right? Will there be different practices? 100%. I'll tell you now, as a missionary, I've been to Africa, I've been to Asia, I've been even to South America. I, I went where, where you were, we, we went to visit him. Everywhere you go, you see different practices. And are you willing to make compromises so long as it doesn't go against the word of God? So I'll, this was a, this is an interesting thing. Um, one of the things that tends to happen, especially if you go like on a holiday here or there and you have to visit different churches. One of the things when you have a greater knowledge of the word of God is what tends to happen. You start to pick things that you're like, oh, that's wrong. That's wrong. Oh, I wouldn't have said that the way he said it, mm. the when he preaches a message, you're like, oh, don't really agree so with that interpretation. Start like, looking at the start dots. Start looking at all the little dots and you're like, hold on. Instead of me coming here and being like, you know what, let me learn. Let me humbly look at. These are the, the dots I'm looking at mm. are trivial. Trivial, yeah. They're not, it's not something, because this happened just last week when I was away. I went down south and I was at a church and I started noticing I was doing that. With just the trivial things, I'm like, oh, I wouldn't have gone that route yeah. in the message, in that text. And I'm like, well, hold on. Who cares about you? Right? Listen to what the Word of God is saying. And even if he gets one or two things wrong here or there theologically, listen and learn. He wasn't saying anything heretical. He wasn't saying anything wrong. I just didn't agree with the interpretation of it. Right? Yeah. And so this is where I think a lot of the division stands. It's because of ego. And I'm I'm part of that. I think like I, we we all have that in us because of the opportunity to divide. I agree, and 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 I think if we look at, for example, church history, like for example, Cyril and Nestorius, you see examples of that. How like I think he's going to become a Nestorian. He keeps talking about. <laughs> I'm not a Nestorian. I'm not. I'm, I'm strictly against it. Nestorianism <laughs> is a heresy. Yeah. Nestorius was a Nestorian. Is my point? Is yeah. No, I get you. I'm yeah. I'm just. Yeah. Um, so sorry, just be. I don't mm. want to cut you off. You said, would you um, accept to compromise without compromising the word? Mm. Personally, no. I would do it. No, without compromising. Oh, without compromising. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. With I, I would do it all the time. Yeah, and really. I do it actually all the okay. time. I so, would for example, compromise... if you have to dip your hand in holy water and draw the cross, you would do that. Uh, I don't know if that's compromising the word. But I'm no, talking I'm about in the sense not... of compromising that's, culture, that's, yeah. Yeah. compromising when it comes to um, the uniform. Because yeah. I know certain churches that you would go to, mm. that they, they wear long tie. pants, right? But that's what I'm saying. I'm saying, yeah. are you okay with doing things so long as it's not heretical or blasphemous? Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. if someone tells me to go um, wear long pants yeah. or wear a suit to come to church, yeah. and for me to go to church, that is... That, that is a no-brainer. It's not going to stop me from going to church. Okay. But if someone going to come and says, well, we don't believe in the Trinity, therefore you need to change your, you know, you need to change your, your beliefs yeah. for you to come into this church. Sorry, okay. I can't do that. Okay, so so now we have a clear understanding on that. And, and but here's, here's where we kind of say, this is where we draw the line, right? What happens if those teachings are not just a small compromise. How about if they're heretical and they're accretions to what Martin Luther was believing in at that time? For example, the um, uh, the miraculous conception of Mary, right? How she was born without sin. That's an mm -hmm. accretion that 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 was, I think, dogmatized either in the eighteen hundreds or the nineteen hundreds. What about that? It doesn't affect my salvation. That's one. Well, it's but it doesn't affect your salvation. Yeah, but it's but it does go against a lot of scripture that mm -hmm, you yeah. would see in the Bible, right? For all have sinned and fall short exactly. of God's glory. That that scripture would have to change its definition for for you to uh, to accommodate for these kind of beliefs. Yeah. So I can't compromise that. Well, that that's now. Wonderful. Okay. Now, but can you be could, in could, communion? Yes. With could I? Yeah. That that's what I was yes. gonna say. Could you have fellowship with someone that you don't agree with them theologically? I would say yes. Okay. If you look at we, we literally um, sorry, in in First Corinthians, um, Paul speaks about the Corinthian church would baptize for mm -hmm. the dead. Mm -hmm. That's not something that any of us would agree with, right? No. The dead are already gone. 
and God knows where their place is. And it's a blasphemous practice. Yeah. yeah. So, but would you say that they are not Christians? No, because Paul introduces them in chapter one as the saints, the church okay. of God. So would Paul agree with their practices? I no. don't think so. No. He would... But if it's unrepentant, then there's a next step to it. And, well, and, and, that's, but... and that was one of the things, yeah. that's the whole point of First Corinthians. It's admonishing and rebuking mm -hmm. to bring about repentance. If repentance is not like the, the man who took his father's wife, if that is not accomplished, then Paul would probably take it to a next step. Because there are doctrinal and practical and issues. And isn't what we're going through today the next step? Isn't the division with, with the next With certain step? denominations, yes. That's why we don't classify Jehovah's Witnesses or Mormons as Christians. Because, because they don't doctrine, believe in the, the their basics. <laughs> well, their doctrines are completely heretical. Yeah. There are other churches like Oneness Pentecostals where we're like, we have to draw a line in the sand. It, they, there can't be fellowship when there is complete heresy there. Yeah. Gotcha. Would you agree with that? With oneness Pentecostals? Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I agree there. Yeah. But at the same time, I, I, I think that a lot of people in the oneness Pentecostal movement are on a journey. And they're in, a lot of it is ignorance yeah. as well. So, so one of the things that I see with oneness Pentecostals is they don't blaspheme none of the persons mm. of, of the Trinity. They believe they are all God. But if you look at Unitarians and any other forms of of idea of God, there always has to blaspheme someone, yeah. right? Christ is not God. That's a blasphemy. So what I think is that sometimes people come to Christ with a, with muddy eyes. Okay. It's of not course. clear. We all do. Yeah. The more they read the scripture, okay. the more they wash their eyes and the clearer things become. When I became a Christian, okay, I was 17. I didn't have much idea of the Bible. Mm. Okay. When people told me about the Trinity, because I heard it in, in the church, right? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I thought they actually go in that importance, right? Oh. The Father is more important than the Son. But they all one, they all God. Yeah. But then I saw like, oh, okay, Jesus listens to the Father and therefore like... He's lesser than him. Yeah. He he tells him what to do. Jesus follows. Which is a heresy. Yeah. And well, then, um, there's oh, actually a, the, the doctrine relating to that, the eternal subordination of the Son. Oh, so that, yeah. that as well. Yeah. They, they need to read the Gospel of John on that. Um, but then someone came and approached me in the church and says, because we talked about it, and it's like, no, that's not right. This is like they're all equal. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, they're all equal in, in their nat nature, attribute, and, right. and, and in their way. And I'm like, oh, okay, thanks for clarifying that with me. Now, the day before that, was I a Christian? Yes. yes. The day after that, was I a Christian? Yes. yes. The idea that Abraham is sharing is that people will come at a crossroad. You know, you, you clarify your doctrine all the time, right? You, you get that clarity. So you're always going to come in, into a crossroads and you're like, okay, could I choose the right way? And sometimes it's a pill that's hard to swallow because mm. I can see in the Bible. Or am I just going to emotionally offend my background or my culture or my beliefs or my parents beliefs or my mm. church's belief because a lot of people even until today are oh, my denomination beliefs this yeah cool i, I didn't care what is yeah. that <laughs> well, can you define that with scripture can you back it up with scripture that's something that we okay. can uh... so so from what i'm getting is you're saying that regardless of the denomination even if we view their beliefs as heretical like, for example, if they're a Nestorian church or if they're a church that doesn't believe in penal substitution, they're, st we sh they're still our brothers and sisters in Christ. You have to be careful there in saying that. Like my, my personal view, the way I see it, the Catholic church is huge, mm -hmm. right? Because especially when I was um, doing mission work in the Middle East, a lot of the Christians there are Catholic because, you know, they don't even have Protestant churches in a lot of the little like regions or um, in the villages and stuff like that, right? There are people there within those villages who are more faithful than yeah. most Protestants in the Western church, yeah. right? So it's like, it's kind of like, all right, well, there are definitely certain doctrines that are blasphemous mm -hmm. in the Roman church. That doesn't exclude every member of the Roman yeah. Catholic Church, and that's what that's I'm all. At. That's all we're saying. We just have to be careful. Like, yeah. 
firstly, it's not our place to say, all right, that person saved and that person isn't, because there's a lot of people who might be in a church with perfect doctrine who aren't saved either. True. Right. So our basis for community and, and communion with believers is in Christ Jesus, in the work of Jesus. And, and but you see that, for example, the, the Catholic Church believe in Christ as victor, which believe that the Christ is victorious over death, over sin. Therefore, we are saved. Mm. Right. It's not that it's penal substitution, but it's just that Christ's victory over it. We are saved. Um, so if if that's the case. All right. Can there be union? There's no penal substitution. They don't believe in it. Yeah. Okay. Even though that's in their doctrine, because mm -hmm. I met a lot of Catholics where I, I, I would speak to them about it. I said, so you don't believe Jesus took your sin on the cross? They're like, no, 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 we do believe it. I'm like, wait, but you're but a Catholic. Yeah. <laughs> but most yeah. Catholics don't know their dogma and their do doctrine. Yeah, that, that, that's sometimes it, is that some people are ignorant of their denomination's belief. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And some people would... You know, every Joe would sit down and read the Bible like, okay, this is what the Bible says, this is what I'm going to believe. The, one of the points I would like to bring, when when the disciples came and rebuked a person for casting out demons that wasn't part of their group, they came to Jesus proudly mm. sharing, they're like, look, we stopped this guy because he wasn't one of us. Mm. Which is what you see today with denominations. It's more of one of us, one of us, one of us. Jesus says, don't do that. Yeah. If anyone is with me, it's not against, against me. I think mm, okay. uh, what, what I would like to share in this, to clarify things, I, I think if it, this doesn't make it more clearer, I don't know what else will make. I don't connect with someone as my brother in Christ because he might believe in my own denominations, my, what I'm following, or someone else's denominations. I'm connected to this person as my brother in Christ because he's connected to Christ. Mm -hmm. I think those who are in Christ, we are one with them. Amen. The universal and those who are, yeah, yeah, those who are not in Christ, we can't be one with them. I compromise agree. or not compromise. So like Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, they don't believe in the divinity of Christ, no, so therefore no. we can never be in union with them. They're not, they're Whereas not the Catholic rich. Church, the Orthodox Church, um, and the Church of the East, they do believe in the divinity of Christ, so therefore we can be in union with them. Yeah. The thing is, with some those extent. denominations, is we believe... In the same God. The triune but, God. But then when you look at Jehovah Witness and Mormons, they are creating a different God. Completely. It's yeah. a different so, gospel. So what we are arguing when it comes to Protestants, Orthodox and Catholics is we're arguing how does God do things? How he it's, actually works. Yeah. And, so he's yeah. the same person, but how does he th do things? Now, for example, if Abraham comes to me and says, Oh, I know Emil. Emil is blonde six foot tall um does this does that and then i come i'm like no emil is not blonde he's got dark hair he's got a beard we're talking about a different person here but then if we come together we describe emil the same way we're like this is emil dark dark hair beard he's wearing a hat he's got glasses but emil likes to eat at, at this restaurant abraham might say well no i don't think so emil likes to eat at a different restaurant we're still talking about the same person we're just talking about the preferences of that person, the way he does things, what his will is for us when we're talking about God. That's the differences we're talking about between these denominations. It's not like Mormons and Jehovah gotcha. Witness. Makes sense. So as long as it doesn't affect the character of who God is, then we can be in union with him. As long as it doesn't affect who God is. Like, yeah. for example, if you say that there is only one God... But we believe in the triangle, that's a different God. Right? Yeah. If you say we believe that um Jesus came only in the spirit and not in the flesh, that's not the same no, that, Jesus that, we that's believe that, in. That's what, yeah. So I'm the, I the, I, the I problem problem is, is, yeah. Go. Yeah. The problem is why it's a bit difficult to answer the questions that you're sharing. And these are great questions. We should do a topic about this. Is that there can't be a simple answer because a lot of people will just go to a different part of their brain and say, mm. what about this? What about this? Mm. What about that? It's not easy to share a, a simple answer that can cover okay. a lot of things. Gotcha. But what I would encourage is that we do need to strive for unity yeah. without compromising the word of God. It might be difficult, but by the wisdom that we have in the Holy Spirit. Yeah, it's and, possible. And this is what I like about this. We read Ephesians 4, right? 
the person that desires the unity of the church the most is Christ himself. Yeah. Right? So if we're going to act like as if Christ is doing his own thing and we're fighting for unity, that's the wrong perspective. He's fighting with us. He's fighting with us and Amen. he's actually ahead of us in this time. Well, he's have... actually, his process, his process is cleansing the bride. That's mm. his role. So he's been doing that for the last 2000 years. Yeah. So it's a process of cleansing and making pure. And part of that is mm. this whole evolution and deconstruction of denominations and everything. So there's an unfolding of it that eventually I think, you know, it's in the hands of Christ and he's going to be working it out. That's his yeah. role for us as believers. Like what Martin was saying there, there has to be an element of grace and compassion mm. and, and walking alongside the weaker brothers. Yeah. Sometimes like there are people, I remember there was one issue with a member of the church who was struggling with one thing for months and we're like, look, man, you're okay. It's, it's all right. Um, they, I think they believe that they blasphemed the Holy Spirit and, and, oh. and we, we had to walk yeah. alongside our weaker brother yeah. and it turned out fine yeah. because our prayers, our encouragement, our counseling, whatnot, right? Because the reason why this is important to me is because I've got family and friends that I really mm. love and care about. I've got some family that are Catholic, some that are church, part of the Church of the East. Um, that's why Nestorianism is something I bring up a lot because half my family is Nestorian. Um, and then I've got family that's Protestant and I've got, you know, people that are just Orthodox and some that are even just mm. non-Christian at all. They don't believe in Christ or anything for that matter. They're just, um, atheist. So I've got, which I, of, of course we can't be in union with them, but, um, for the people that believe in Christ and the divinity of Christ and the triune God, I really want to be in union with them. Of course, there's some things I can never compromise, but I can still call them brothers and sisters in Christ, right? Mm. And and I don't believe that this this desire for unity is coming out of just, you know, that desperate ignorance, um, or... yeah, or ignorance, but, but that desperate, um, like I love them, yeah, yeah wanting um... of attachment. It's more like um, this desire of unity that is in my heart. I believe is mm. Christ led. And the spirit is calling me to be one with my brothers. Mm. Now, there are people that are in error. And this is what you would see in the New Testament. The letters of Paul, Peter, John, James, um, all of them. It's talking about, hey, could we prune these ideas out of our mind and let us be united mm. as one? And this is what you would see in Philippians 2. It speaks about that Paul's greatest desire right that he wants us to be united in one mind yeah mm -hmm. there's there's only one aspect of it you might disagree with me here um i based on my understanding of the scripture i actually categorize it differently between someone who claims to be a leader or a pastor and a member mm. you might disagree here i hold a teacher to a much higher standard i agree yeah, it's right. biblical. So, I agree. But in that, what I'll say, because in Galatians, Paul is speaking very clearly, saying, if an angel or anyone comes preaching a different gospel, that includes the nature of God as well. And they're the teacher, their primary teacher, preacher, pastor, and they're preaching this. Paul is saying, let him be accursed. All right. Now, some members are blindly in ignorance following and then when you reveal to them the truth, they're like, oh, wait, yeah, you're right. And so they get out of that situation. That's a different story. The teacher, though, the word of God looks at as a wolf in sheep clothing. So there's a there's a subset there. There's a there's a category categorical difference mm -hmm. there that I maintain. So I'm very different. Like I will hold the teacher to a higher standard and I will be a lot firmer. The same way Christ was like radically against the Pharisees and Sadducees and very compassionate towards the I people. I usually, I've, I've come across my family members that um, we have discussions, we have arguments about certain things. So they're different denominations than me. And ultimately, we talk about their church leaders and I say to them, look, at the end of the day, everything that I've said, I'm not condemning your church leaders. You should be praying for them. Biblically, you should be. Because maybe they're misguided. Maybe they don't don't see the truth. Pray for them. If if that is the case, then God will 
reveal to them the truth. But if that's not the case, then... Again, th yeah. there's a reason why the Word of God says, I wish that many of you will not be teachers because there is a higher judgment. There is. So the judgment on a teacher, on an elder, on a leader is higher. way higher than on just a member yeah, of the I church. Agree. So. so you've got the, the, the harsh judgment that James speaks about, about the mm. leaders, but you also got that honor that these people would receive if they do their if job well yeah, in yeah. first timothy mm. um so you could see that higher reward it, higher yeah. punishment well that's that's what High it is risk, risk to war, reward ratio yeah that's crypto, what it bro, is. Crypto. <laughs> well that's the yeah, crypto investments but it it's true that and, and i think this is where you would look at martin luther he said that he was very tough on the leadership of yeah, the catholic right. church mm -hmm. but he recognized the catholic church yeah. Um, to be a church of God and this whole idea that my church is the only true church you know and my teachings are the only true teachings and everybody's second-class citizens in the kingdom of God they're living in tents or some of them <laughs> wait what did you say <laughs> so they're living in tents <laughs> it, it's common you hear that a lot um, oh goodness but, but <laughs> I've lost my train of thought <laughs> not not eating Gucci here <laughs> um yeah well okay we're we've actually gone 46 minutes hey, uh, I think we'll yeah, very long one. <laughs> that's um, why we don't do a three group podcast here <laughs> uh, may, may it's actually good hey. it, it was actually good i think we need to do this quite more often um i'll just have to change the settings in this yeah. place to to get all that done but let us know what you think let yeah. us know what you think i might yeah. put even short some short videos of this discussion in the beginning of the podcast mm -hmm. hopefully that people might find it a bit more interesting and but, yeah thank you guys for listening to our christmas special that had nothing to do with christmas <laughs> yeah there you go and merry christmas <laughs> merry christmas to you guys god bless you we do have one more video about the new year um goals that yeah. we're going to be posting mm -hmm. um and that's going to be really fun uh who's, who's that me and me and you yeah cool uh, we'll get that going and God bless you. Enjoy your time. Bye. Okay, guys. Take care.